Welcome to the Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. You're watching and listening to the Scott Townsend Show, and today I have with me uh, another special guest, uh, Nolan Townsend. Say hello, Nolan. How's it going? Good, and you? Doing well, doing well. So Nolan is a general manager at the uh, Social Lounge in George uh, at College Station, Texas, and uh, he uh, we we were talking the other day about uh, the effect that the coronavirus COVID has had on the hospitality industry. So I invited Nolan on the show to speak from a hospitality perspective. What uh, in Texas in particular, what this means to the hospitality industry. Um, the economy in general, and specifically the hospitality industry. So, tell me, um, and uh, tell me the story of uh, you know at, at the first of the year, you had uh, you know things were rocking or along January, February, no big deal, you know. And take us through uh, what kind of tell us how the cards, the dominoes started to fall when the virus uh, kind of swept through the United States. How did that affect you guys? And how did you experience that? Shortly after the, the students had their spring break, so it was sometime in March, uh, you know, everybody was hearing about the virus and everything. And uh, we kind of, I guess we had kind of had a feeling that, uh, you know, that there, there was talks about businesses closing down, the virus is a serious thing. So, um, we ended up, you know, shutting down. Uh, so the first, when well, I say the first quarantine, we shut down about mid-March. Um, and we closed for a good while, about two and a half months or so. Um, was that so voluntary? That was, that Was that your decision or was that decision made for you? That decision was made for us. Uh, we weren't allowed to open our doors for, for a good long while. So the hospitality industry, a lot of people – uh, and restaurants, bars, things like that, uh, were out of a job for a little while there. Then after, after that first one, we were allowed to reopen. Uh, we are open about a month. And then, uh, the, the second one, I didn't see the second one coming, <laughs> uh, when they, they told us to close our doors again. So, um, uh, we're, we're kind of in a, in a waiting game at this point to see, uh, when they'll let us reopen. So you're still closed. Still close. Yeah. So, who tells you to shut down? Does some? Uh, do you get a phone call? Does someone drive by and tell you? Who, how do you find out? We've been finding out from the news. Um, you know, the news articles. You know, Governor Abbott will say something, and it'll come out on an article. Uh, and we'll shut our doors. We are. You know, really, I haven't gotten any phone calls. It's just we kind of collectively see that and say, okay, I guess we can't open. You know. Not so what happens right. if you do open? There's been a couple, let's see, there was a bar um, that opened in our district and uh, they were open for about two hours and then the police came and shut them down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't so, last long. <laughs> no, not too long. <laughs> so ha have you noticed that the, uh, the situation has brought the hospitality industry, especially in the, uh, College Station, their home of the Texas A and M, the Aggies, right? That's absolutely right. So, have you have you noticed that it's brought you guys closer together as far as an industry? I mean, do you guys check in with each other? Are you sharing best practices? What do you, you know? You guys are kind of like comrades in arms right now. Right. Yeah. That that is a positive. You know, there's there's definitely a positive side to it in that regard. That we're a lot of bar owners are, yeah, they're talking to each other. Hey, man, how, how can we open? Uh, different strategies. A lot of uh, a lot of places that are allowed to be open right now because they uh, sell food or they they require their <clears throat> their food license. Uh, the, while they're open, uh, people that work at other bars, maybe even competition bars, will be in there promoting for them, helping them, you know, just doing something. And and the people that are open are paying these people, you know, giving these people a little bit of money. To, to keep themselves going. So definitely more camaraderie uh, right now than I've seen ever. I, I saw in the Texas Tribune, um, 15, whoop, 
1,500 restaurants or something are affected because of this second shutdown and 35,000 jobs have been eliminated. And there's a prediction that 30% of the restaurant bar, uh, restaurants and bars will be closed in Texas. Um, so what do you guys, what's the plan? I mean, what, uh, you can't do this forever. So what's the, uh, I saw something about the uh, TABC people are going to get a food and something certificate. What's that all about? That's, that's, that's exactly it. So we, for instance, uh, have applied for our food license. Uh, so TABC will not, there, there's no, there's no date that, that we're there, that they've told us that we can reopen as normal. So what, what the option is, is we can acquire a food license uh, and what that requires a lot of processing and waiting for them to process that. But we also on our end, we have to build a kitchen space that has to. And so JBC will come in and, and say whether or not it's viable or to their, to their standards and then uh, serve food to customers. And we have to keep our sales over 51% of food, food base. And then, you know, we can have 49 or less percent in alcohol sales. So what's the definition of a kitchen? Uh, that's, that's, that's the million dollar question right now. The, you know, what we've done, we, we've got a stain, we got a back room with a stainless steel uh, serving table. Uh, and we have food warmers and heat lamps and stuff like that. We're, we're going to be selling tacos made by a restaurant down the street. So that's what, and, that's what we're going to do. That, that, that's, so they're going to come in and, and say whether or not our kitchen is up to par or not. Uh, I've seen other bars, kitchens, they're all different. So, you know, it's kind of just putting it together. Everybody's kind of putting together what they can to make a kitchen. So, right. Get the, get the green light. Let me see. So I saw where they were, some people were defining a kitchen as having a, uh, a, a hood with a fire suppression system, a grease trap, and... Um, but that sounded like really expensive. I was like, not a lot of people are going to be able to spend that kind of money. I mean, it might cost right. 15,000 just for the grease trap, you know, but, uh, right. Hopefully they'll let you guys like, uh, well, maybe have a food truck parked outside. I mean, I wonder if they would consider that, uh, satisfying the kitchen qualification. That'd be pretty cool for your situation. Right. Yeah. And there's certain people that can do that, uh, especially people that have, you know, outdoor patios, you know, right. they can fit a truck on there. Then there's other people like us. We're, we're kind of, as soon as you walk out of the door, now you're on public property, you know, so we can't do a food truck. Um, but we're, we're kind of lucky because we our building used to be a restaurant. So we have a grease trap already. Okay. So, I mean, we're lucky on the how do you think uh, this uh, virus is going to affect your business in the future? I mean, um, when I was in college, if we went out, you know, it was like shoulder to shoulder people, you know, packed and, yeah. you know, and so if you're telling everybody to socially distance, <laughs> it's kind of like it kills the whole uh, vibe, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, they dancing in the dance club, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you put a hula hoop around you so you don't bump into people, you know. <laughs> That's what you should do. Pass out hula hoops and uh, put yeah. sky, lounge, sky, uh, sky Lounge on the print, printed on the hula hoop. I saw where there was one bar yeah. where they had a uh, t- actual inflatable tires that they had like suspenders on. And so you would like, <laughs> like bumper cars, you would bump into each other but it would keep you six feet away from everybody so i thought that was hilarious on each person <laughs> <laughs> i mean if i were i think if i were a business i would totally embrace the coronavirus thing i think i would totally play it up um my, yeah. you know uh after the first lockdown, so when we were allowed to reopen, we, we were allowed to open at 25% capacity when we, when we were allowed to reopen. So our capacity is 176, so for us, that's 44 people. So what we did is the thing we call around the world, or around the U.S. So we, we went over to the, the fabric store, uh, Joanne's Fabric, and bought 
a ton of uh, just felt, you know, black felt. And we would what we did is we boxed off sections, hung it from the ceiling, and had it about eight feet wide. And then there was a backsplash. Uh, there's a bartender in each section. They're all sectioned off, so you know they can't see each other. Like it's basically in their own little rooms. They have a backsplash. One was New York City. One was Honolulu. Uh, one was Vegas. One was New Orleans. And then let's see, one was LA or Hollywood. So they would deck. The, they were all decorated in their section, and they would serve uh, a a mini drink from that. That, that you would traditionally get in that city or state. Oh, right. So it's like you're doing around, like a little tour through the U.S. kind of. That's cool. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll talk about the future of the hospitality industry with Nolan Townsend. Uh, stick with us. We'll be right back. All right, so we're back. I'm with Nolan Townsend, general manager of the Social Lounge in College Station, Texas, home of the Texas Aggies. We were talking about uh, you were going to fill us in on what do you think the future of the hospitality industry is going to look like? I think it'll get back. You know, it, I guess I haven't been, I don't, I don't know how many, you know, t- times throughout history something like this has happened, but I think people are going to be sensitive for a little while uh, afterwards. Uh, some people are going to be so ready to go when, when we, when things open back up. Uh, but th- then again, you'll have your sensitive people and I think it'll, it'll just people that are uh, concerned about it. And, but like you said, vaccines will come out something along those lines. One thing we're going to do uh, is just have a way, have a quick and easy way to section off areas. So what I've seen a lot of people doing, they have plexiglass sheets. So say you have a bunch of booths next to each other. Um, you can you can put a piece of plexiglass in between people and things like that uh, to, to keep people from breathing on each other. Some bars have plexiglass in front of the bar, so you can't you know breathe on the serving area. Uh, I think having things like that on hand is is the move. It makes me feel so contagious. I mean, it makes me feel like uh, I've got uh, I'm a biohazard. Uh, problem you know when you go to the bank or the grocery store and they got all this plexiglass up you know because they don't want me to infect anything and i'm like i'm not i don't i, I, I don't i'm not i'm not infectious so, you know i'm just yeah yeah I, it's I like we're like all so out, sensitive if, if, yeah if i pick the the wrong jug of milk i feel like i can't put it back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, if you touch it, you buy it. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not if you break it; it's if you touch it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you touch, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. well, Nolan, thanks a lot for everything. Thanks for the info and bringing us up to speed on the hospitality industry and some insight as to what that's going to mean to you guys and the future of the hospitality s- business, uh, particularly in Texas. To get more information about Nolan and social lounge i'll put uh, information in the description below on the podcast and on the youtube channel also the uh the theme song for the scott townsend show was by uh, andros andros guitar and angie jordan once again she did the logo for the for the show so i appreciate that for nolan townsend this is scott townsend thanks for watching the scott townsend show and we'll check you later Scott Townsend Show is a Dietzo Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Let's go.